Uh, good morning friends. So last time we have discussed the moment curvature relationships or plate bending problems. Now today we will see the various types of plate elements used for bending analysis of plate. Now basically there are two types of elements rectangular elements and the triangular elements. So first we will see the rectangular elements. Now the rectangular elements are of two types. The first one is ACM element. So actually this element is developed by Adini, Clock and Martin in 1969. So therefore this element is called ACM element which is developed by Adini, Kwok and Martin in 1969. So the degrees of freedom here considered are 3 per note. That is W article deflection, then theta x rotation about x axis, theta y rotation about y axis. So W is the primary degree of freedom and theta x, theta y are the derived degrees of freedom because we can find out theta x, theta y once we know the displacement function for W by differentiating with respect to x and y. So there are four nodes, it's a rectangular element, there are four nodes, so total degree of freedom is 12. 4 into 3, 3 per node, so total degree of freedom is 12. If 12 is the total degree of freedom, then the size of element stiffness matrix developed will be 12 by 12. So element stiffness matrix developed will be our order of 12 by 12. Then the number of terms in a displacement function should be 12. So actually the, the total degree of freedom is 12. We are going to assume the displacement function only for W. So theta x, theta y are the derived. Hence all the terms should be, all 12 terms should be in displacement function. And while assuming the displacement function, we have to make the use of Pascal's triangle. Now here, in this element, as far as W and diaba W by diaba X are concerned, this is compatible. But diaba W by diaba is not compatible with other elements with other elements hence therefore the element is called non-conforming non-conforming element this is because daba w by daba y is not compatible with other elements and hence the element is called non-conforming element but even though it is a non-conforming element this element gives a good results or the results which are very close to the exact results so results are acceptable results even though the element is a non-conforming element now while assuming the displacement function for W, we have to consider the Pascal triangle. Now here is the Pascal triangle. So we know that while assuming the displacement function, the displacement function must be balanced in X and Y. And again, it should consist total number of terms 12. So we have to consider these terms. Then 
this is excluded sorry this the total number of terms should be 12 this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 means this term is excluded So the displacement function W is equal to, it starts with constant, that is alpha 1, alpha 2x, alpha 3y, plus alpha 4x square, plus alpha 5xy, plus alpha 6y square, then plus alpha 7x2 plus alpha 8 x square y plus alpha 9 x y square plus alpha 10 y two plus and we have to consider this alpha 11 x cube y plus alpha 12 x y cube. So this is the assumed displacement function. So once we know how to assume a displacement function at any point within the element by using Pascal's triangle, then the further procedure of formulating element stiffness matrix is a repetitive type so which is exactly similar to what we have done earlier for various types of elements so i think there is no need to discuss the further formulation of element stiffness matrix but even though see i will just uh, explain the procedure so you calculate theta x this is daba w by daba x so now we can differentiate this expression with respect to x. So this gives us alpha 2 plus this is 2 alpha 4x plus alpha 5y plus 3 alpha 7x square plus 2 alpha 8xy plus alpha 9y square then plus 3 alpha 11 x square y and this is plus alpha 12 y cube. So similarly you can find out theta x theta y daba w by daba y. So now differentiate the above expression with respect to y and you will get this as alpha 3 plus here it is alpha 5x plus 2 alpha 6y then plus alpha 8x square plus 2 alpha 9xy plus 3 alpha 10y square plus alpha 11 x cube plus 3 alpha 12 x y square. So now these are the displacement function for ACM element at any point within the element. Now we can extend these displacement functions at nodes. So this we have written at any point within the element. Now at each of the node, by substituting the corresponding coordinates, so we can write down the displacement function. And then after substituting the coordinates, so finally, in symbolic form, what you will get is this displacements, that is delta 
equal to this coordinate matrix and into the wave field, the constant generalized vector or generalized coordinate vector. So alpha. So this alpha is equal to this A inverse into delta. So the first part is to develop the displacement functions by using Pascal's triangle. The next step is strain displacement relations. Strain displacement relations. So strain, so this we can calculate by using this expression, say epsilon x equal to daba u by daba x. So daba w by daba x. Daba w by daba x. So this is equal to minus z daba square w by daba x square. So second derivative, second differentiation of the displacement function w. Similarly, you will get epsilon y equal to daba w by daba y, which is equal to minus z daba square w by daba y square. Then gamma xy equal to minus z 2 into daba square w by daba x daba y. So we can develop all these expressions and finally these expressions can be written in matrix form. So in matrix form, symbolically, the strain is equal to, so we'll get the strain displacement matrix into alpha. So now we know this is B into alpha is A inverse into T. This is A inverse into, sorry, displacements, delta, A inverse into delta. So here we get the strain displacement relations. The next step is stress strain relations. Now for only one element I will explain this procedure of for formulating K. Hereafter this procedure is a repetitive type. So every time I am not going to repeat this procedure for developing element stiffness matrix. So only what we will see, how to assume the displacement function for a particular type of element. Then later on, you can develop this procedure on your own because now you know very well how to evaluate K by using this procedure. So next, stress strain relationships that we know, directly I will write down the symbolic form. So this is equal to D, this expressions already last time we have discussed D into strain. So this is that flexural rigidity matrix D into strain. This is B, then A inverse into delta. And finally, by using principle of virtual work done using principle of virtual work done that we know this is delta virtual displacement transpose of virtual displacement into nodal force vector equal to triple integration triple integration into the strengths due to virtual displacement transpose strain transpose into stress into dx dy dz or entire value we have to work out the so that is this is the virtual work done must be equal to the total strain energy stored this is the virtual work done by the nodal forces over the virtual displacements delta, corresponding virtual displacements delta and the right hand side indicates the total strain energy stored due to stresses and stress. 
Now, after substituting this, this is triple integration, strain transpose. So, this we can simplify delta transpose, then A inverse transpose, then B transpose. In a reverse order, we have to write down. So, this we already said for to expand this. And then stress it is D, B, A inverse into delta into dx, dy, dz. So this we can cancel. And finally what we get is f equal to it is k into delta. Delta is this. So where the element stiffness matrix k represents equal to triple integration. It's A inverse transpose B transpose D B A inverse dx dy dz. Then this is the element stiffness formulation for element stiffness matrix for a same element only the sizes of matrices gets changed for various types of elements otherwise the entire procedure remains same so that k now by using natural coordinate system if we introduce the safe functions again this a inverse transpose and a inverse that is coordinate matrix gets eliminated once we introduce the safe functions Again, if we formulate say functions by using natural coordinate system, that is formulations on the basis of isoparametric elements, again the limits of integration becomes minus 1 to plus 1. So finding out a numerical integration by using natural coordinate system becomes easy. So now this is about ACM element. Now next one is the second type, let's see. The second element, rectangular element, is BSF element. Say BSF element. Why this is called BSF element? Actually, this element is developed by Bogner and Skimme. and Fox. So that's why the element is called BSF element. Now in this element the one more degree of freedom is introduced that is called twist twist of surface that is theta xy is introduced so now here in this case daba square w by daba x daba y this is additional degree of freedom per node that is twist of surface twist of surface theta x y is considered is considered now that means the total degree of freedom degree of freedom becomes 4 per node. So this is W theta x theta y and 
theta x y. So therefore, the total degree of freedom is equal to 4 into 4, 60. So the size of k will be 16 by 16. And number of terms in assumed displacement function must be 16. So now we have to consider 16 terms. Again we are considering the same element, say a rectangular element only. This is 1, 2, 3 and 4. 4 noted rectangular element. Now for this 4 noted rectangular element, so the displacement function assumed is the 12 terms of ACM element. They are considered as it is. 12 terms of ACM element plus these additional terms are 4 additional terms. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 12 terms that means this is alpha 13 x square y square plus alpha 14 x cube y square plus alpha 15 uh, alpha 15 x square y cube plus alpha 16 x cube y cube. So the displacement function assumed for BSF element is this the four 12 terms of ACM element plus the additional 4 terms, these additional 4 terms are to be considered for BSF elements. And the electron, the further procedure that the theta x, theta y, that remains same. And then we can develop strain displacement relations, stress strain relations, and then by using principle of virtual work, we can find out element stiffness matrix for BSF element. Now here the BSF element satisfies so both so this element is a confirming element. This is compatible. All these degrees of freedom are compatible. So this element is a confirming element. This element is a confirming element because all the assumed, all the degrees of freedom are compatible with other elements and therefore the element is called confirming element and this gives good results as compared to ACM element. So now we have completed the part of rectangular elements. Now we will see the various types of triangular elements used for plate bending analysis. So let's stop here this lecture.